The trucking industry in the United States alone is worth $700 billion. Nearly 6% of all full-time jobs are in the trucking industry. 71% of all freight moved in the United States is done by truck. And Tesla is going to upend all of this with their new semi. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I have relatives in the trucking industry, so this episode is actually kind of personal. Obviously from statistics, trucking moves most of the things around in the country and in many places in the world. Of course, there's shipping over the ocean via plane and via train, which are the other modes of shipping, but trucking really is the largest share of it right now, at least again in the United States, which is what I know the best. So therefore, trucking is a huge industry in the US and again, from what I can see, the rest of the world as well. Many people, especially those without college degrees and such, depend on trucking for their livelihood. And of course, trucking is based on diesel fuel and human beings. Those that depend on trucking, obviously the truck drivers. There are company and fleet owners, fuel stations, service stations, vehicle manufacturers, and parts manufacturers, just to name a few. And of course, just to put it in context, there's two main varieties of trucking. There's short haul trucking, which is less than around five or 600 miles or a thousand kilometers. And there's long haul cross country trucking or intercountry trucking, which is over a thousand kilometers. So a huge economy rests on trucking, but it's inefficient. Human drivers cost a lot of money. Human drivers have to legally take breaks a lot. Human drivers are prone to mistakes after a long day of driving. Fuel and maintenance of diesel engines is really expensive. And of course, it's not good for the environment either. Trains are far more environmentally friendly for overland transport and they cost less as well, but they're slow and they can't go to a lot of destinations. And so they're kind of awkward. So trucks really have taken over. And this is where Tesla's semi comes in and is set to disrupt the industry. Let's talk about how and why in just a minute. But first, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely make sure you like it because that's how YouTube's algorithm works. And definitely subscribe if you want to see more of these. Also, a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the bomb. I really do appreciate all of the support and everything. And you can't see it, but this uh, entire studio has been updated quite a bit from all of this. Also, a big shout out to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion. You search for him on YouTube or Instagram. Instagram. He's awesome. And of course, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely check out the referral link in the description. If you buy a Tesla through our link, you get a thousand free supercharger miles and so do we. And actually, I have a little secret to tell you. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do a whole episode on this, but I want to say we ended up changing our mind uh, a few days ago, actually, and changing from a Model 3 to a Model Y. And weirdly enough, it looks like the Model Y actually might get delivered really soon. So we might be the proud new owners of a Tesla Model Y rather than a Model 3 in the near future. There's an episode on here of why we bought the Model 3, but uh, <laughs> we changed our minds. So there you go. Anyway, we'll get to that in a future episode, but I think that's kind of an interesting thing. Okay, so back to trucking. How is Tesla set to disrupt the industry? First of all, let's talk about environmental environmental. Battery electric vehicle trucks will be much more environmentally friendly. They have zero on-site emissions. And of course, one can argue about construction and mining and other building costs. But over the long haul, it's quite obvious that battery electric vehicles are less expensive to operate over the lifetime of the vehicle than are gas and diesel uh, engine cars and trucks. So why it might be a little more environmentally taxing to build these trucks, over time they definitely save environmentally because they are much friendlier for the environment. And of course the fuel that goes into these trucks can be made more environmentally friendly and over time hopefully will be made that way so that we'll have more green sources of electricity. So as they're charged up you get more and more clean energy rather than diesel fuel which is pretty much what it's going to be forever. It's just a polluting source of energy. Also I think it's worth noting people often talk about the fact that batteries are too heavy and so it's going to cut down on the amount of freight that trucks can deliver. And that could be true a bit, but as Elon Musk has recently pointed out, batteries are getting much, much better. They're getting lighter. They're going to be energy efficient and be able to drive, according to him, about a thousand kilometers on one charge. And they won't weigh that much more. He said you'd sacrifice about a ton of weight. And I think a lot of trucks are not driving at the limit of their weight. So they're actually okay with, you know, sacrificing a ton for these extra benefits that they get. So next, let's talk about safety. Even before full autonomy, driver assist features will make the trucks safer. 
And of course, once full autonomy is available, even if it requires a driver monitor to be in the truck with it, the trucks are going to become much safer. You're not going to have tired people. You're not going to have people who had a, a rough night last night. You're not going to have distracted drivers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, the trucks will be safer a lot safer once there's a full level of autonomy in them, even if they require monitors in them with it. And now let's talk about expense. Of course, this is the big one. Truck fleet companies will save tons using battery electric vehicles. Just the electricity part means lower energy costs. Electric is far cheaper than diesel. You also get higher truck usage even without full autonomy. Drivers can currently only operate the vehicle about 10 to 12 hours before needing that much time off. But with a Tesla Semi with semi-autonomy, you could have a truck driver monitor hand off the truck like a relay race or something, right? And one driver drives, say, Los Angeles to Salina, Utah. That person then trades off and another driver takes it from there to Denver, Colorado. The first driver can then take a break and then take a truck going the other direction back again, monitor it and pick it up from Salina and go back to Los Angeles again. Thus, these trucks can basically be used whenever they're not charging up. And of course, with electric vehicles, you get a lot lower maintenance cost by, by far, so the companies will save millions of dollars. And of course, when we get to full autonomy, things are really going to get inexpensive. And all the auto data will actually feed into the system and make truck driving autonomy come much faster than a lot of people think. Again, trucks are different than cars, but they're not starting from scratch, so they'll be able to train the trucking data based on the car data that already exists. And of course, Tesla and these companies can focus on long haul trucking to start with, which is mostly on the highways. And autonomy is really, really close to being there already for that type of driving. Once one company fleet uses autonomy, other laggard companies are going to be outpriced and outcompeted if they don't follow suit like really fast. So it's going to be a very rapid domino effect that the companies are going to quickly follow suit as fast as they can. And of course, either consumers are going to save, which I hope is the case, or companies are going to rake in bigger profits, or more likely a bit of both of those things. What do I think about all this disruption? Well, first, how will, how will companies adapt? I think they will have the easiest time of it, right? Companies will need cash outlay to buy new trucks, but they can kind of roll this out as older trucks are retired. And the ones who get on board with this the fastest are going to have a huge first mover advantage. They're going to be able to save a ton on fuel and maintenance right away and the potential to save a crazy amount when they don't need drivers anymore. How are individuals going to adapt? <laughs> this is a much tougher one and makes me really sad for my relations that work in this industry. Truck driving is a really good career for them right now, and it's good money for those with like a high school type education. So what are they going to do when fleets start going fully autonomous and they're not required anymore? Well, first, I expect them to shift to shorter haul trucking, which will probably go autonomous later than long haul trucking. And after that, it could be a really difficult transition and some care really should be taken to ensure these people's ability to transition to other fields. And finally, what is this gonna to do to our economy overall? Well, it's going to hurt truckers really badly. It's going to hurt service stations, oil and gas production, and possibly hotels and fueling centers en route, but it could also potentially be good for them too. It will help trucking fleets, right? The companies that own the trucks, they're gonna make massive profits. It's going to hopefully help consumers because we'll get cheaper items since the shipping costs will be cheaper. And it's going to help the environment as well because electricity will reduce air pollution on site and also hopefully be able to be produced in a more green fashion over time. And you never know, it might also create some new business sectors that will center around this new industry that we don't even know of yet. So how is the world going to adapt to this? Well, regular folks could be hit hard by this transition. But it's going to happen. If trucking companies can save money and compete better, they're going to do it. So consumers at large and the environment will definitely be the winners, along with these companies, of course. But individual workers stand to be the big losers, which means those in government positions right now should really be looking at how to help the trucking industry workers get through this transition. Will the government do this? I sincerely doubt it. Should they? Absolutely. Okay, I hope you found this episode interesting and informative and at least a little thought provoking. If you did, definitely make sure you like and subscribe and definitely ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.